see a couple of teams here that really like to put the ball in the air. This is Aldridge in motion. And stacked up for no game is Lloyd Henderson. Excellent pursuit by the Bulldogs. Uh, one lineup change that uh, people... And Aldridge are the twins to the near side of the quarterback. This is Aldridge in motion now. And he swings it out. And it's going to be a running room for Byron Brown. He gets all the way to the 27-yard line. Kevin Johnson getting back to make the tackle. And uh, right now, I think the Bulldogs are a little bit shocked at what's going on. Excellent, excellent. The ball is spotted. Tedford calling signals. He's going to the air. And he throws across the middle for Stefan Page. And he does a great job of getting to that ball about the 35-yard line. Alan Lagan brought him down. Stefan Page was really jackknifed there as he caught that ball. Stefan has done this very well this year of having to go up and get the ball and hanging on. Very well knowing that uh, he's going to get cracked coming down. We have to keep out of your screen. And Jeff is looking downfield. He's going for Page. Another great catch by Stefan out about the 40-yard line. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. They'll mark it right at the 40-yard line. Teddy Nelson, the freshman, making the stop. Stefan Page has made two brilliant catches showing his great leaping ability. Jeff getting good protection here as he has all season. About the same pattern with Page breaking across the middle a little deeper this time. Look at him ball, up in the air. Right, and the ball was a little bit behind him. Tough catch and uh, very nicely done. Stefan Page on the ear. We play in zone. Tedford over the middle, and Ellard is in the seam down to the 25-yard line for a first down. Nothing fancy about that. Just a little post pattern. Six DBs back, but there was no one within five yards of Henry when he caught that ball. All right, well, you have six backs, which you call a dime defense. You have to do two things. First of all, you can go across the middle, or you have to find the seams, and Eller did both of them on this play. You have to get into the open before you get into where the double or maybe even triple coverage is, and hitting off it right now, just straight ahead dive play. Tedford will try to take it himself. He does so. Fresno stays on the board. When they get down, short yard situation like that, Pat, uh, Jeff's not afraid to call his own number. No, uh, he's, he, 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 he's very strong. And uh, they, they definitely see something, you know, with, uh, with, with Garten going out over there on that side. Uh, they're definitely picking on the, uh, the left side of the Rebels' uh, defensive line and been very successful in their running play. Look at it. So Scott Darrow gets his first call of the night. Scott is, uh, I guess, having a, an off year by Scott Darrow standards, 19 to 24 PATs. There's 5 of 10 on the field goal department. But this one is through. And wait a minute, there's a flag. I don't think this one is, they're going to have to kick again. They had a lot, a lot of jumping around. I don't know if uh, they called it definitely before the right. kick, so I think they're going to have to uh, kick it over. But who the penalties on? I'll to check it out now. Fresno State. Bulldogs. Well, you know, Scott, uh, great expectations this year after a super, super junior year coming out of COS. Uh, but then got that thigh injury, and boy, there's no ser more serious injury for a, for a kicker. Uh, he tried to kick for a while and couldn't and rested and tried to make a kickoff or two, and it, it just was bothering, and then he sat out a couple of games. So it hasn't been that kind of year, but I think last week we saw at that 52-yard field goal that Scott's got his leg back, and we'll see how he does with uh, five yards further back. Ball is spotted at the 15-yard line, and this ball again is through. And the Bulldogs are on top 7-3. We'll be right back. Cunningham, I don't, no one uh, touched Morris on that play. Cunningham, as we mentioned, the putter. And it's fielded by Matt McKnight. Gets across midfield. He's got the move. 40, 35, 30. Down to inside the 25-yard line. A beautiful play by Matt McKnight. He's finally run out of bounds by Rick Van Horn. You know, Matt McKnight has not put in on uh, the kicking teams to run the ball usually. It's in a situation where they think they're going to fair catch. Losing Eric Fox, uh, who did not make the trip, uh, still uh, healing up a little bit. He'll be back for the Cowboy also. But normally it's a fair catch situation, but excellent blocking. And then Matt breaks it to the sidelines here and actually goes untouched. Nice move. Good, good blocking from the Bulldogs there. And about the best punt return Fresno State has had this year. This year. Ball at the 16. Get to Carter. He's got room outside. Gets across the 10. Down to about the five-yard line where he's run out of bounds. Harvey Allen driving him out there. A little of the reason why 
the uh, Las Vegas team is last in in total defense in the conference and on the rush. Uh, Carter's not touched as he comes around here. Defensive secondary having to come up to make a tackle again. Great effort by Terry. Uh, straight arming and then, then gaining about another eight yards. So Terry Carter has had a very good game in his first start of the season. Dale Thomas joins him in the backfield now. And Tedford will run the option, trying to get the keeper. He's got six more points. Jeff Tedford puts Fresno State on top 13-0 with a minute 41 left in the first quarter. Nice run on the option that time. It was the first time with that full house backfield that they were looking to option if it was necessary. But Jeff saw the hole open up again between Molly and Lockwood. 14-3, Bulldogs on top. Randall Cunningham looking at a second down and five. He pitches the ball to Henderson trying to get outside, and it will not work. Great job by Kevin Jones that time. Defensive end, holding his position, then going after the carry, although he didn't make the tackle. He slowed him up enough for the pursuit to catch up. We have the six backs again in. Elliott comes across the middle. They'll throw to him. He's wide open, gets across the 40, up to midfield where he's brought down. That's, a, that's almost impossible to cover Henry on a play like that, uh, Pat, where he just comes right across the middle like that, and he basically he's got to be picked up by a linebacker. That's right. Williams, in this particular case, number 40, has to follow him across the field. And, of course, Fresno State likes to do this. Give him some running room across and let him use that outstanding speed and quickness. Williams coming into the picture now. Makes a good tackle. Henry right. Ellard, uh, definitely in consideration for PC2A Player of the Year, All-America. Well, you know he's Sports Illustrated uh, Player of the Week. And, in fact, Sports Illustrated writer Jim uh, Kaplan is here doing a story on Henry. This is uh, Eric Redwood getting nice yardage outside out of the 40-yard line. Close to the first down. Gain of 10 for Eric Redwood. Alex Williams brings him down. He's got a second and short, and he's going to throw, and he's going to throw long. But that ball is picked off. And this he's is going to be six in. points the other way. Harvey Allen, the freshman, all the way down. And Las Vegas gets a big lift here. Just as Jeff tried to unload the ball, he got hit. It just kind of dribbled out of his arm. And intercepted, and there was nobody to catch him because everybody was blocking down. An interesting turn of events here in Las Vegas. Jeff Tedford trying to look long, and uh, he was really popped. And that ball went right into uh, the hands of Harvey Allen. Of Harvey Allen, the freshman. The Bulldogs were wondering if the inside linebackers, they've had a lot of injuries on the Rebels in that area, but could stay with their backs coming out. And we've seen on a couple of offensive plays that the Bulldogs trying to exploit that. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Inside handoff to Redwood. He turns the corner, 30, 35, and he's run out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. This is the most room that Eric Redwood or any of the, uh, the tailbacks and the running backs have had all year of getting it. Replacing Thomas and Redwood, so we're seeing two pretty good tandems uh, of running back. Tedford is winding it up, and he's going uh -huh. through the end zone, but uh, that ball is picked off. Number 39, Teddy Nelson. Intercepts Stefan had uh, double uh, coverage down there. He went up. I think Stefan mistimed his jump there. Perhaps we'll be able to see it in the replay. I think he, he just uh, played mistimed his jump, and as a result, as he was coming down, Nelson was going up, and he got the ball. This is one time Jeff could just not get the ball deep enough. He steps up now and just unleashes it, throws it a long ways, but it, Stefan was out in front, and we'll see the ball come down eventually. And two Rebels beat one Bulldog in that particular case because of injuries with... Paul Dameron. And this is a fumble. The ball is bounced and Matt McKnight's got it. Fresno State's got the ball I back. Think, I think, hold on for a second, Scott. I think they might have marked the ball down. I think Let's check it. One of... And here's the play. He's hit there. And then the ball bounces loose after he hits the ground. But, but it is a fumble. Maybe it's uh, advancing a fumble, I think, Pat. Perhaps that the ball is spotted where it was recovered. And, and well, the important thing is the, the Bulldogs do have the ball back, and as we've seen all year in these kinds of situations, they've liked to go long right away. 6.03 to go in the half. 
And Tedford's rolling out, and he is going long. The ball is stripped. It's loose, and who's on the ball? Las Vegas has the ball back. Number 69 makes the recovery for Las Vegas. Um, let's check that. West Davis. West Davis. West Davis. recovers it. Again, for the second time, they're getting good pressure on Tedford. Now watch from behind. Number 80 comes Ooh. in just as he lets, starts to let loose. Now sometimes they'll say in pro football, if you, saw, Butler, yeah. if, you, if you saw Jeff's arm, it was going forward, but in the uh, six. The difference between a field goal and a touchdown, perhaps. And Cunningham runs out of the pocket. And he shot a touchdown, Las Vegas. all by himself that particular time. He was definitely looking past, and then he saw the the open spaces up the middle and just took it in, and he was tackled by about two Bulldogs about the two or three yard line and just pushed it in. At that time, he ran Brent Damati standing by with an old Fresno State graduate, perhaps an unpopular Fresno State graduate as we get into the basketball season. Brent, who do you got for us? Okay, we're talking with Jerry Tarkanian, the head basketball coach for the Rebels of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And uh, Jerry, basketball season right around the corner. The media this past week has chosen your Rebels to win the championship and our Fresno State Bulldogs to finish second. Do you see it that way, one, two? Well, I sure hope they're right, but, you know, it's hard to say. I don't know. I, I think we're going to be good, and I think Fresno's going to be good. I think Fullerton's going to be good. But, you know, I left early before they voted, but I think for the last 17 years, they've always voted me to win. So, uh, you know, I just think it's a habit. Now, I don't, we lost a lot of players. We lost uh, a lot of talent from last year's team. But I still think we're going to be a good ball club. Uh, do, do you, uh, who are some of the players you have coming back, Jerry? Well, we have Sidney Green and Larry Anderson and uh, my son Danny were three starters from last year. We have a fine freshman kid named Eldridge Hudson. And uh, uh, we have an excellent uh, kid who'll get eligible on the 22nd of uh, December, a kid named Jeff Collins. Now, you played in the uh, Pacific Coast Athletic Association and set some uh, outstanding standing records at Long Beach. Are you glad to be back in the conference? Well, yeah, I, yeah, I think the PCA is a great conference. I think it's the, one of the strongest uh, basketball conferences in the country. I really I really believe that. I think you're going to see maybe three or four teams that will compete on a national level compete very well at the PCA. So I think it's a good conference. Uh, they're all good cities. They're places where our fans will enjoy going. And, uh, and I really enjoyed the people, the coaches, the athletic directors, and the people we met in the PCA have all been great. Do you personally uh, feel happy about being back in a conference rather than playing as an independent? Well, you know, being an independent has a lot of advantages, but so does the conference. Uh, the problem with an independent is it's hard to get January and February dates. December dates are easy, but... You know, most everybody's in a league now, and, and uh, you know, and, and being an independent, we had to travel so much. Like, last year we went back east four times, and that's just, uh, it's very expensive. We have a super reputation here at uh, Las Vegas, and uh, we wish you luck as you come back into the PC2A. Well, thank you. Jerry Tarkini, ladies and gentlemen, the head basketball coach for the Rebels, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. In an eye formation. And Jeff's back in that pocket. He throws over the middle through Henry Ellard. He catches the ball at midfield, and he's stopped right there. And there's a flag, and, a, and a, definitely a good flag. Teddy Nelson, just un, uncalled for, uh, lifting Henry up and slamming him to the turf, and he's going to get 15 yards on the play. He yeah, got 52-yard field goal attempt. So we're playing uh, Havoc with Scott Darrow's mind games right here. This ball is in the direction. It's good! Scott Darrow from 52 yards, tying his longest field goal of the year. Put the Bulldogs on top, 17-15. We're coming right back. He's in one season by a Fresno State team. I'll put you on the spot in a minute after we watch uh, Carter here. Hey, wait a minute. Carter might go all the way. He's run out of bounds. Finally, by the freshman, Harvey Allen. We'll have to take another look at that one. But 
when do they get that other 10-win uh, season? Well, it was uh, engineered by the uh, quarterback coach for the Bulldogs, John Anabo, the Mercy Bowl team, 1961. John sharing quarterback duties with Bo Carter that year. An excellent run, but let's give credit to the blocking. Jerry Lockwood out here in front. Henry Eller just gave a block. John Blacksville, you see number 56. Now from a rear view. As he goes down the sidelines for an excellent game. Mark's ball on the 25-yard line. Once again, they're going to go to that well, so that well runs dry. If he can hurdle one defender, he's going to be close to the goal line. He'll get inside the five to the four-yard line. Terry Carter, the senior, his last regular season game as a Bulldog, and he's putting on a great show. All right, on backfield. And there's that naked reverse by Jeff Tedford. He's in for six. A dangerous play, but when it works, like it did there, he took MacArthur Butler inside, and when it works, it works well. Well, it, it's a dangerous play only if, if the man stays home, but uh, the, uh, the Rebels' defensive strategy, or the way it's been described, as you see Jeff all by himself here, is the fact that they're a wild emotional bunch, and a wild emotional bunch goes after the ball. Where they think Third down, 23. Cunningham, again forced out of the pocket. This time he is sacked. Who's in there? Clyde? Oh, Clyde the, uh, the, the Vegas native returns home and says hello to Randall way. Cunningham. And the interesting thing about Clyde is that he did not play high school football. But he had to go to a night school and, and uh, to complete his high school education. Of course, uh, not having a, uh, a football program, and so he got started at junior college up at Walla Walla, redshirted last year for Fresno State and his real a defensive force as we come back now, the punt in the air. Matt McDyne will take the third catch at the 47 yard. They come out from off the bench and just getting uh, circulation going again. Well, the way the Bulldogs have been running now, his arm's got to be stiffening up a little, but he's going to uncrank it right here. And he got Stefan Page to about the 33 yard line, first down for the Bulldogs. Has fathered him off and on. All the more amazing in this particular year's performance. Here's Eric Redwood getting some running room down to the 24-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. He's brought down by Wyman Henderson. Now, fourth down and two. And Tedford will roll, and he's in trouble, but he unloads the ball. Redwood, can he get to it? No! I think they might be calling it a fumble. It doesn't make any difference. They would have had the ball anyway. There was an interception. There they are going to call it an interception, apparently. But the post corner favorite passing patterns out in this part of the field. Cunningham drops straight back, comes over the middle to Habrick. Habrick breaks free, could be six it is. Las Vegas has climbed back to within three points with a 9-12 to go in the game. The brick he's called, Joel Hambrick has got the Rebels hot. Well, you saw the Bulldogs disappointed down there, and the reason being is that they knew as well as we did what their favorite play was in that particular situation. But you see Hambrick get a well-thrown ball from Cunningham, and everybody just goes right by him as they're trying to make the tackle. They have about three or four Bulldogs. There's one, two, three. That's the Rebels' favorite play this year. Hambrick's a six, seven off, and he drops straight back. He's looking Henry's way. Henry inside the 40-yard line, and that's where he stopped. And Henry draws a lot of traffic. He's brought down uh, very hard. I think you're right in that particular play there, Scott. I think uh, Jeff was probably checking off because of the coverage they saw. You know, Jeff has done an excellent job at that this year. In Fresno State. As the drive going here, here's Dave Adams a lot of room up to the 20-yard line. There's Dave popping one, his biggest play of the night. Super misdirection by Fresno State as every all the flow was going to the uh, left side of the Fresno State line. Now watch as Fran O'Brien moves in position over there. Now watch the flow all go to the uh, left of the screen, and then he breaks it back over the over the middle of the right in a big hole there. Finally, brought State defense. No Again. blitz. And Morris Brown giving chase. Are they going to get to him? No. He breaks free. Cunningham down to the 12-yard line. Makes that the 13-yard line. Well, the ball game this reminds us of is earlier in the year at Oregon. 
And the Bulldogs were pinned right back on the goal line. Now watch, as you say, Morris Brown is just is about a step behind him as he fights off. He breaks up the middle and Morris tries to grab him here. Can't. Chases him a little bit more. Right into Kevin Johnson. Right, Bobby Stevenson gets one hand on him, but that's not enough to stop somebody 6-4 back to live action. Ball spotted on the 13-yard line. Rebel fans are up here, going up top. Touchdown, Rebel! Aldridge, Raymond Aldridge has got the ball in the end zone with a minute nine left. No flags on the play. Rebels at top, 28-27. Excellent reception by Aldridge that time. Darren Franklin, Derek Franklin on the coverage. But Aldridge had position on him right on the goal line and screened him off and Cunningham threw the ball very well. On the clock left, Raptor Stanford had taken the lead. Is that Howard around the kickoff back? Gates, and is that Ellard deep? This could be interesting. It is Ellard, and Ellard will field the ball at his own five-yard line. He cuts out. He's, he's, got, a, he's got a lane. He's he got a lane. He's got a lane. Henry Ellard, what a play! He stepped out of bounds. Right. Stepped out of bounds, they say, at the back at the 40-yard line. Oh, my. Well, I'll tell you what, the only person on the sideline that's not complaining is Jim Sweeney, and he had an excellent shot at it. Dog. Under center. Throws over the middle. He's got Ellard wide open. Down to the 40-yard line. Another first down, and it's going to be up to Scott Darrell. 44 seconds left. One pass completion, and then getting your timeout, or a possibility if you get to the sidelines with two pass completions. Third out of draw, Dave Adams, room to right the 20-yard line. Now the time out. Time. Immediately, Jeff Tepper with eight seconds left. And out comes Scott Gary. You talked about pressure kicks. He hasn't had many, if any, at all this year. And here he is with the game on the line. Right out of the excellent play for the ball to be almost directly in the middle of the field. Seven yards back. Be about uh, from the 28-yard line, 29-yard line, making it a 30. Well, he's marking it on the 28. 28. So it'll be a 38-yard field goal. Now, there's no doubt that Scott Darrow has the leg to do this. Uh, it's a question if it's a good snap. Jeff Tedford again, uh, the holder. John Blackville, the center. And then it's the nerves inside the kicker. Scott Darrow, the senior. We're going to see what he's made of right here. A conference co-championship or a conference championship outright on the line. Jeff Tedford asking the official now how much time they might have. I don't think they've signaled the timeout well, I over yet. I, that's what the... And now, is, right. and now the whistle, so now they have the 30 seconds to get the playoff. The Rebels keep running people in and off the field. Spotted. It's up, and it's got the yardage, but it is it's good. Ed. Scott Darrow has just put the Bulldogs back on top of four seconds. 30, 28, and there's a and flag. That's right. They're going to have to kick off. They're going to have to kick off now from, uh, I'm not sure if that's a 15-yard penalty, a 10-yard penalty, but they will have to kick off from deeper in territory. Lyman now. Payne, McKnight, Franklin. They're all very, very deep. 20 yards off the ball. Sam Chance, they'll all drop straight back. Cutting him. He's just going to unload it. Up. Now they're looking for the penalties. Long down the penalty. right there. I think and it's not McKnight. McKnight the ball. The game is over. Fresno State has won an emotional 30 28 game. Their 10th win of the year. 10 and 1 on the year the first time. The uh, second time in history they've won 10 games. More importantly, 6 and 0 they finished. They were picked to finish 5th in the conference. They come out and win the conference with a perfect 6 and 0 record. We'll be back. Hey, okay, Brent, you've got the mic. Go ahead, Brent. Okay. Scott, Scott Darrow, the uh, hero of the day. Uh, you kicked that absolutely fabulous field goal just at the time you had to. Uh, what kind of pressure do you feel on a time like that, Scott? Uh, I just try to keep calm and cool and uh, try to do the best I can, which Coach Sweeney's coached me real well. <laughs> uh, are, are you are you feeling it 
when you're under a pressure si uh, situation like that any more than uh, just an average field goal? Uh, the 51 yarder, I think I was a lot more nervous than this one, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. Our team still stuck it together and we put it through. We did real well. Uh, now on a play like that, it has to be a perfect snap from center, a, a perfect placement by Tedford, and then a perfect kick by yourself, right? Oh yeah, it was all points, all phases, and they were all good. Congratulations, you did very well. Thank you much. Okay. Thank you. Good job, and here's the man that brought the championship to the uh, PC2A to Fresno, Jim Sweeney. I represent the man that brought the championship to him, that's right. All right. Really pleased with him. Congratulations, Jim, on uh, an outright championship. And that was some, dro that was uh, Cardiac Hill, was it, that going was down tough. that drive? Yeah. Yeah, it was a great kickoff return by Henry, and he stepped on the line just oh, about that much. It was an awesome play. Great, uh, great, great Scott play. commented at the time, uh, doing the play-by-play, -play, that you were the only person who was not complaining about it because you had a perfect shot at where he stepped on. He stepped on, barely. And it was a good call. Uh, now, when does great the team... Great kicking by, by Darrell. That's, oh, that's one I guess. Because he's had a really hard year in the last couple weeks. He's done real well. Came through the injury and hung tough. You know, we are going to redshirt him and all those things. And... His kicking was a big difference tonight. I'm awfully happy for him to see him close his senior year like that because he is a pro prospect kicking. Absolutely, and he did uh, such a tremendous job under pressure. Uh, when do you get the team back uh, ready for Cowboy? Will you have a week off? Yeah, we'll take a week off, and, and then, and then uh, we'll practice three days the next week, and then the next week after that we'll begin preparation. You're going to have any trouble getting him up? They are keeping him up for four weeks? It's four uh, weeks. Yeah, the today. leadership is with the players here. They get themselves up. Congratulations, Jim. Okay, okay. thank you very much.